going on, Superman's Comics family? It is Sunday night, so we are wrapping up day four with that San Diego Comic-Con at home recap. We are your hosts, Brian and Jack from Superman's Comics, and we had some great panels today, but overall, San Diego Comic-Con just hasn't seemed like it's supposed to be. But Jack, what were some of the panels that we had today that would be important to our Superman's Comics viewers? Well, definitely everybody in the Simple Lens Comics family knows about our affinity and the secondary market's affinity for Boom Studios. And today they had a Discover Yours panel. On this panel, Boom brought in a bunch of different creators who have brand new number one series coming uh, in the near future. So it was a great look inside the upcoming titles that a lot of people are going to be looking at in their previews catalogs and online um, and on the last call show right here on Simple Men's Comics YouTube channel, um, looking to place those orders for. So great piece of information. Probably the highlight of that was Matt Kent talking about teaming up with Keanu Reeves on the upcoming title Berserker. And um, some of the kind of important notes uh, were that, you know, he talked about Keanu's commitment to the project. He didn't want to do it if Keanu was just putting his name on it, um, that he didn't want to do all the work. And he really feels like it's been 50-50 and, and that Keanu's had some great ideas. He also said it's been very cool in, in the writing process having Keanu say the lines and then know whether that line really has stuck. That's been actually tough for him to hear is hear some of his lines said back. So um, kind of cool information there. Uh, I think that the we talked yesterday about some of the publisher panels not coming off very well. This one was much better presented, uh, great layout. And then also having, um, you know, an executive from Boom who's in charge of sales, like Philip Flip Sadlick, you were able to have him kind of lead the discussion um, and kind of give the buyers and the community the information that they, they really want to hear. So yeah, it was another great panel with Boom Studios. We're not saying that just because we're fans. It was just a, a fun, energetic panel, which is what we saw a lot of these online panels kind of missing a lot of great information but it's kind of missing that energy or synergy i guess you could say but another great panel and a lot of great details like you said coming out of matt kent especially a lot of hype behind berserker and i don't think we've even seen the beginning of that hype machine right no no not yet i think uh that train has yet to fully lead the station i don't think the comic buying community really understands what's upon them yet but moving on to the next panel another great panel we also had that Funko Fun TV. Everyone knows one of the great things about San Diego Comic-Con are the Funkos. Normally there's a lottery, right? Trying to get in there and get these Funkos. A little bit more availability being able to buy it online, but they still sold out so quick. But this was another great panel nonetheless, right? Right, now Funko is known for those exclusives at San Diego Comic-Con, but they're also known for their event party at San Diego at the actual convention center. This party is kind of the event for Funko. There's exclusive figures you can only get at the party, including some of the most limited and highly sought after on the secondary market. Um, they always bring celebrity guests. Uh, the founder of Funko is an absolute nut. The current CEO and owner of Funko is also a nut. And when you put these two guys together, you tend to have this like really fun fan event that has defined Funko as a brand. Remember that Funko is the fun company. But with San Diego Comic-Con going virtual, it, this, this, like we mentioned yesterday, this gives you a lot, of, um, a lot of obstacles. But at the same point, it gives you opportunity because you can expose yourself to such a larger audience. Funko took that seriously. They won Comic-Con hands down in my eyes because what they did was instead of delivering a Zoom call very similar to what you and I are doing at this moment, they produced a 80s or 90s style television show, an infomercial of sorts, pitching all of their upcoming new products. Funko debuted a lot of upcoming new toy lines, including collaborations with McDonald's, Disneyland for their 65th anniversary of the uh, Disneyland parks, um, a lot of new ad icons, as well as their foray into board games and doing licensed board games and then build some really cool board games coming from Back to the Future, as well as Marvel. Yeah, I know for Christmas this past year, my wife got me some of the Funko, like the Gotham and the, some of the Batman ones. But in addition to that, they also had some celebrity guests in there, right? Yeah, that's right. You know, just like we said with the, the Funko fun nights at uh, San Diego Comic-Con, they brought that same energy with the cameos that they dropped in. People like Elvira, Walter Jones, the Black Power Ranger, um, 
you know, Metallica's Kirk Hammett, you, you name it, they brought uh, some of the most famous supporters of the Funko brand um, in with cameos. And, and that really kind of elevated everything. So again, we got to say shout out to Funko. And I hope that if we're ever in a situation like this or in other future um, kind of virtual settings that publishers and people within the comic industry take a look at what Funko did and bring that element into a lot of their presentations. So those are the two main panels we want to highlight for Sunday, the final day of San Diego Comic-Con. But last night when we were doing the recap for day three, they also had the Eisner Award winners, right? We want to recap some of the ones that we think Superman's comic viewers might find important. That's right, right, Ted. And yesterday, the Eisner Awards uh, occurred. Today, they had a panel discussing and kind of highlighting some of those winners. And, you know, there's a lot of winners, and a lot of them come from places that aren't traditional comics. A lot of original graphic novels, especially the YA um, area. Certainly, we've talked about on the channel, Brian and my children, um, kind of growing up reading those kinds of graphic novels. But some of your favorite and most speculated on comics also made an appearance. Bitter Root won the best ongoing series. Uh, Little Bird won the best limited series. Um, we also saw Mariko Tamaki, um, who uh, is kind of known with the DC Comics universe, um, but really had a big hit with her original graphic novel. She won best writer, as well as Christian Ward winning best uh, painter, um, as far as kind of like a cover art style. Yeah, huge Christian Ward fans on the channel, but even more so, we've been talking about Bitterroot for a while now. Also, on this very channel, we have their panel from last year's Heroes Con as well, right? That's right, that's right. Full panel uh, discussing everything from the inspiration to the series um, to everything you need to know to jump in. Definitely big fans of that series and implore everybody to check it out. Volume one of the trade is out right now. Volume two is coming in, I believe, like a week. Yeah, couldn't think of a better series to win that award. We love that series. We talk about it a lot on the channel. We keep trying to recommend it. So maybe this will help people that were kind of kind of hesitant to pick this up. Maybe they'll go pick it up now, seeing what all the buzz is about. And we promise you, we think you'll like it. But we also had some news outside the con as usual, right? That's right. We talked about that, you know, every year at San Diego Comic Con. Um, while news is rampant at the convention there's so much going on outside the convention as publishers are capitalizing on the attention from you the comic buying audience and there's a lot of announcement and talk and we've got an update to one of our stories from outside the convention uh previously we talked about tom king and his tweet saying that you know he didn't want to support the jay league cover for his upcoming Rorschach number one. He since put another tweet out saying that he spoke to Jay Lee and that Jay Lee wasn't aware of Comics Gate, that he's not active on Twitter, and um, that he wasn't aware that this had even happened. Um, and Tom King said everything is all good. It was the best possible outcome. Jay Lee has since put out a statement on Instagram saying things are far from all good, that, you know, that tweet that Tom King put out was dangerous, that it risked his job and his 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 livelihood um it also ruined a day for him and his wife that was important apparently they were mourning the loss of a family pet um so you know it, it's a messy situation it's difficult and definitely another one where everyone's talking about it and that's gonna get for whether the right reasons or wrong reasons a lot of attention on this title so definitely one people are going to be talking about it. kind of sticking within the world of dc comics um heavyweight dc comics writer Tom Taylor, who is the writer of Deceased, writer of Suicide Squad, um, who made an appearance at San Diego Comic-Con talking about the impending death of Deadshot in the Suicide Squad title within continuity, not like those deceased deaths that he's written in the past. Um, he hinted strongly that Injustice is returning to DC Comics. Um, and that has been something that has been long clamored for by fans. Tom Taylor also was uh, the writer on that series way back when. Um, and now it looks like there could be getting second life. I think DC would be smart at this point to go all in with Tom Taylor because he's a star on the rise and his upcoming creator owned series from Boom Studios. Seven Secrets is only going to continue to cement that. And finally, Marvel Comics. They announced a variant program and usually I hate their sweeping publisher wide variant programs, but I actually think this one is kind of cool. They are doing a COVID quarantine themed 
variant program called Heroes at Home that's going to depict the heroes doing very mundane kind of daily things that we've all had to do um, while stuck at home. So you're going to see Spider-Man baking and things like that. Um, while they may seem less action-packed, I think they're a great snapshot of this time and place. And the reality is, this is the weirdest thing we've ever gone through, certainly in my lifetime. And it, hopefully this is a one-time thing. And if 20, 30 years from now, we're sitting here looking back at this as a time in history, these books could be a great marker for that and, and could be good long-term place. So while they'll be dismissed as silly, um, I'm actually bullish on their long-term value. Yeah, I only wish their little brain trust would have came up with this quicker instead of however they came up with those on sale on Wednesday variants because they kind of missed the mark on that one, in my opinion. But oh, in everyone's opinion. <laughs> yeah, but some great news outside the con, some great panels inside the con, and that kind of wraps up San Diego Comic-Con. There's a whole bunch of panels, so make sure we'll also put the link in the description. You'll find it in all, all four-day recaps. We have the main programming schedule if you want to check out the con schedule for each, each panel you might be interested in, as well as the links for the specific panels that we've discussed in these videos. But con is wrapped, and it's time to offer our final thoughts of San Diego Comic-Con at home. Jack, I'll let you start. Well, I enjoyed it. I, I usually I don't get to participate in San Diego Comic Con. So my my entire San Diego Comic Con being an East Coaster who has yet to attend the convention um, it is usually surrounding Twitter. I am stalking Twitter trying to see what information different con goers are pulling out of panels and trying to be able to react as quickly as possible, whether it's buy underpriced books, whether it's get books ready to sell um, that are going to pop. All of that kind of fun and fervor was gone, even though I had access to the con because it just seemed like the same content wasn't delivered from the publishers. Um, I think they live off the live crowds and the excitement of the day. And when you took that away and they actually had to deliver information, uh, the information didn't necessarily match up. So we lost a lot of that. I also want to say um, that the interesting thing is, and, 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 and Brian, I know this will probably come off maybe even a little arrogant. Um, San Diego Comic-Con came into our world. They came into the YouTube um, world. This is where we live every day, every week. Um, this is where we make our mark. And certainly we don't have the best production, certainly on my side, um, best production, best audio in, in the world or anything like that. But we put a lot of energy and effort into things like our presentation and editing, putting out thought into the programs that we want to present here on the channel. San Diego Comic-Con was pre-recorded. Many of these panels were recorded as much as a month in advance. And with that kind of time and preparation, I would have liked to have seen a lot more go into a lot of these panels than what we saw. We essentially saw almost open live discussions rather than anything that was pre-planned out and presented. And when you take it from a live setting to the setting that we got it on YouTube, um, I think they should have played to the platform that they were on rather than stayed within their own lane that they're used to, um, just imagining. And it's, it's really interesting to me that some of these panels that are um, filled with big names or important people within the comics industry, their, their numbers that they're getting for views is far less than what the average comic YouTube channel will pull in for content. Um, and I think, you know, also the hosts, is they picked a lot of hosts who are also used to these high production shows, people from Collider and IGN, who while they may be on YouTube, they're, do they're doing that high production thing. You know what, this may be a hot take, but I think Simpleman's Comics, I think the Comic Core, I think the Downright Nerdy Podcast, Two Brothers Comics, Burke's Family Comics, Comic Tom 101, I think all of these people could have done a better job presenting um, what it is that we do um, on this YouTube platform than a lot of the people that I saw moderating these panels. Yeah, I think it's different. I think, of course, the, the uh, their first time going into it, so I'm sure they'll have lessons learned coming out of it, just like everyone will. My thoughts on the con is, one, just kind of like you said, I don't get to attend San Diego Comic Con, so I was glad to have the availability for a lot of these panels that I wouldn't get the information except for secondhand. Either way, I think it's different though, also because 
San Diego Comic Con is that mecca of Comic Cons that people want to go to. They want it's the experience is what you're what yes. you're wanting to get. It's the envy of people not being able to go while you were there. It's being able to see your heroes, your favorite creators, your favorite artists, your favorite the cosplay, the the funk, <laughs> if you could say the, you know, the yeah, there's no smell this year. No smell. Yeah. This year. <laughs> I mean, you could, maybe you could light some fart candles or something. I don't know, but yeah. Yeah. If it stinks, if it stinks at San Diego comic-con this year, it's your fault. <laughs> but, but it's just that whole immersive experience. And I mean, that's just any time you've seen it on, on, online is, is, is different in its own right because one you have other distractions where if you're there you're sitting on a panel you're you're in there with other fans of the same people so you share that same experience you share that same fandom and you're just there and taking it all in where here uh, sitting at home while my kids asking for cheetos and apple juice and <laughs> everything else and i kind of agree with you where the panels i don't know phone it in isn't the right thing but the guests and the panelists were great. We got some great information on that, but it just wasn't up to what you would expect from San Diego Comic Con quality when you right. know the quality of the con itself compared to the online con was uh, different than what I expected. But still a great con, a bunch of different panels out there. I mean, I, if you want information, there was what, total 350 something panels, something like that? Oh, yeah, so much content. Um, there's something for everybody for sure. I definitely implore everybody to check out the program schedule on Comic-Con International's website. You'll definitely find something that you enjoy, something you want to see. Yeah, and the good thing is those panels are there in perpetuity, right? Unless they decide to take them down. But you can go look at the program schedule, find a panel. You can watch it from a week from now, a week from, you know, a month from now. But one thing I did want to bring up is we talked about that Ty McFarlane sci-fi documentary that aired last night at 11 p.m. Why 11 p.m.? That's just a sci-fi thing, I guess. But either way, fantastic documentary right absolutely incredible uh emotional um it was like i said talking about it a couple days ago it was different from other todd mcfarland documentaries in that it brought us all the way up to the release of spawn 300 really talked about what an undertaking that was and then and how epic of a moment that is so definitely suggest everybody check that out if you didn't get to check it out live it is on the sci-fi app uh that you know w comes with your cable package so look for that wherever you stream things and again, all four days of the recap are available on Simple Man's Comics YouTube channel, as well as links in each description for all the panels we discussed. Let us know what you guys thought of San Diego Comic Con this year. Would you like to see more online Comic Cons? Or would you like to actually experience them? I think there's a little bit of both. Would you be able to, I'd like to see, go to San Diego, but have the panels, <laughs> have the panels at Comic Con uh, telecasted. Maybe even I, I think that's the best of both worlds. I think that's the future um, that get it in front of the most amount of people. I agree with that. I think that's what I would like to see too. But we want to thank each and every one of you guys for watching these recaps. And if this is the first time on this channel, we have a lot of other comic pop culture content on here. So be sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification. That way you get notified every time a new video drops. This is Brian Jack from Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.